A journey of thousand miles begins with a single step. A EVPN service is a logical tunnel that is being used to provide connectivity between two customer sites. And the existing solution has a number of limitations. So when it comes to redundancy, multicast, optimization, provisioning simplicity, so these are the limitations of the existing VPN services that we have. EVPN as a new solution address these limitations. It also outlines a set of requirements that the new solution must address. Hello friends, my name is Sabi and we shift the gear from the TCP series to the EVPN series. And in this video, we'll start about why EVPN. EVPN is a next generation one single control plane protocol that will provide E-Line, E-LAN, L3 VPN, e and data center interconnect. These services were previously provided by different and disjoint VPN technologies such as VPWS, VPLS, L3 VPN, and Trill SPB. VPLS is widely deployed layer 2 technology. However, it has limitations when it comes with multi-homing redundancy, multicast optimization, provisioning simplicity, flow-based load balancing, and multipathing. BGP MPLS based solution called EVPN address these limitations. So in our today's video with EVPN, we'll see this limitations and how EVPN address these solutions. So VPLS versus EVPN, EVPN ELAN service. So we'll first start with Mac learning. In VPLS, Mac learning mechanism is essentially done in the flooding process. When a PE device receives an Ethernet frame, it checks the source MAC address in the frame header and update the MAC in the forwarding database. With associated MAC address and the ingress port details, the destination MAC address in the packet has been looked up. If it is not learned yet, the PE will flood that packet to all other PEs in the same broadcast domain. So the MAC learning process in VPLS is done in a data plane. However, the MAC address flooding can lead to inefficient bandwidth utilization and potentially impact network performance, especially in the scenario with a large number of flooded frames. Whereas in EVPN, MAC learning between PEs occurs not in the data plane, as happens in the traditional bridging in the VPLS. EVPN, the MAC learning process occurs in the control plane, which add a great control over the MAC learning, like restriction on who will learn, what will learn, and also the ability to apply policies. So learning between PEC is done in the method of best suited to C data plane. Learning between P and C is done in the method best suited to the C data plane learning via LLDP, ARP, etc. Once P learn and check the source MAC address and it will update the in the MAC forwarding database. BGP family EVPN with route type 2, the MAC address or the MAC and IP will be advertised in the control plane to the other P's which are in the part of the same broadcast domain. So the control plane learning so the control plane learning enables load balancing to the traffic to and from C that are multi-home to the multiple PEs. This in addition to the load balancing across MPLS via multiple LSPs between the same pair of PEs, which allows C's to connect multiple active links to the attached circuit. It also improves convergence time in the event of certain link failures. This is about the MAC learning in EVPN versus VPLS. Next, we'll see the multi-homing based on draft ITF L2 VPN multi-homing. Multi-homing VPLS C such as C1 is an Ethernet switch. A loop is created in the customer VPLS if it is multi-homed. So the loop must be broken. So at a time, one P is active and the other P will be as a standby. Load balancing technique with C will not work as one PE is a designated forwarder and the other one is a non-designated forwarder or the standby PE. The standby PE is always in a blocking state and no forwarding occurs. The packet originates from CE arrives if it is arrives in PE1 and PE2 
what will happen in the p3 p3 will learn a single mac address from both the pe1 and pe2 so it's a case of mac flip flop so as there is no concept of aliasing with vpls so the mac flip flop will be there in this case whereas in case of evpn so evpn multi home is a feature that enables a device to connect multiple pe's in a evpn network and it provide redundancy and load balancing capabilities it also allow customer networks to have multiple active connection to the service provider enhance network resiliency optimization traffic distribution and there are two primary types of multi homing in evpn one is single host single active multi homing other is all active multi homing a single active multi homing in one active and another will be standby all active multi homing will be all the attached circuits are active simultaneously allow load balancing and active active redundancy in case of bum traffic so traffic towards from c1 to p1 will get loop back to p2 result in broadcast trom mac table overflow unnecessary traffic flows and bandwidth utilization few measures which can be mitigate these issues applying split horizon filter etc in case of vpls whereas in evpn the bum traffic cannot get loop backed only the designated forwarder forward the traffic to the ce this is a built in feature of evpn split horizon label which been used to prevent in the network by prohibiting the forwarding of received traffic on to the interface from where it is received this prevent the traffic from being continuously circulated within the network the designated forwarder is a concept introduced in vpls and evpn to designate a specific p router responsible for forwarding bum traffic to the connected customer edge device the combination of split horizon and df designated forwarder mechanism in bum traffic handling ensure traffic is efficiently distributed within the network preventing loops avoid unnecessary flooding and optimizing delivery of bum traffic to the intended receive recipient vpls cannot do load balancing because it does not support aliasing so when a pe wants to forward a packet looking at the destination mac address it sends only to one of the pe from where it learned from whereas in case of evpn evpn standard describes how we can use a esi ethernet segment identifier to enable load balancing across the evpn so with the concept of aliasing in evpn we can do load balancing in case of multicast traffic so ingress replication has a certain limitations for certain vpls multicast broadcast traffic profiles for example it may results in high optimal bandwidth utilization in the mpls network when a large amount of multicast broadcast traffic is to be transported in case of evpn with ingress replication when a pe of a given instance or a same broadcast domain receives a multicast broadcast packets from one of the ce that belong to the same broadcast domain the ingress pe replicates the packet for each egress pe that belongs to the same broadcast domain and it sends the packet to such egress pe using a unicast tunnel this is about the vpls and evpn next is ip vpn which is a traditional l3 vpn solution versus layer 3 services provided by evpn so evpn complements the existing ip vpn solution with some new added functionality to it the ability to provide multi homing services to a ce while only one single ip peering between p and c session is maintained so we can provide load balancing in the multi homing scenario for l3 services with using evpn vpws which is layer 2 vpn versus e line evpn which is point to point layer 2 services provided by evpn so point to point vpn services between a pair of ce devices that are multi home to a pair of pe's operating in all active multi homing prior to this prior to the evpn such services were not possible so always be the vpws service is point to point with a single homing not with the multi homing which evpn provides 
So in this lecture, we covered about the eVPN versus VPLS and then IPVPN versus L3 services eVPN and point to point VPN, which is VPWS versus eLine eVPN. Thank you for watching. Please share your feedback and questions in the comment box. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you.